explore for today is some other ways to present data on the page. So this is working strictly with the presentation part of it. Um, an update on the lab situation. Uh, apparently you can install lab 25th, uh, lab, Visual Studio lab, uh, 2015 alongside of 2017. So they're going to try to do that in the lab to see if that makes a difference. So um, I'm sorry it's taken this long to correct or, or to address, um, but that has the potential to um, help out with some of these issues. Um, Okay, so let's open this in Visual Studio and we will play using some alternative ways of presenting uh, the data on, on the page. We have, uh, after today's class, of course we do not have class on Thursday. Um, we will have class uh, two times next week. Uh, probably one of them, um, probably... If there's anything I want to talk about that I don't cover today, I'll cover it on Tuesday. Um, I will also ask you if you have questions, problems, get sort of an update on your project. And then Thursday of next week will probably be a, um, a work day for your project. So anyhow, up, up, and away with this. So you know, let me open Visual Studio. And let's look at the faculty list. Because what I plan on doing is I plan on doing the faculty list a couple different ways instead of using a list. So let me look at it, verify that it indeed is the thing I want to base the example off of, and then we can go forward. This, by the way, is an awesome t-shirt, LCCC's football team undefeated since 1963. Yeah, I think I, think I want to work with this one. All right. Uh, essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing different versions, uh, different ways to present the data instead of a grid view and details view. Grid view and details view are like the most basic, and again, a lot of times in software, when you have components, there's like a continuum, all right? And let me just sketch this up here real quick. sort of a, a dichotomy between flexibility and rigidity and the difficulty and the easiness. In other words, grid views and detail views are pretty easy to use. You can use one and in some cases you may not even like need to do any customization at all. It might do exactly what you need, which makes it pretty easy. But certain things are pretty rigid about the way it's laid out. So for example, both of them use tables to lay out the data. You can't get around that using a table. So if you don't want to use a table, well, there's really no way you can get around that with grid views and detail views. 
Now, some of them you have more control over. So more control, less control. That's essentially what I mean. But it involves more work. All right? So you don't get the simplicity of the other one and the ease of the other one, but you have the capability of doing more stuff and doing stuff in a more flexible way. So you have to sort of decide, you know, which do you want. If you're looking for a particular kind of look or a particular kind of behavior that's not available in one of the easy ones, well, you can do it. You just have to put some work in, all right? So it's not a bad trade-off. You just have to sort of evaluate for every project that you're working on how you want that to work. So uh, there is uh, alternatives to the grid view and alternatives to the detail view, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll address, we'll address some of these today. And I'll include all of these in the one example, just so that you can see these things side by side. That doesn't mean that if you're doing it, you have to do it all six ways in your assignments. You pick the one that works best for you, and you use that. So. Let's go in here and let's look at some of the alternatives we have instead of the grid view. I'm actually going to go into my source and I'm going to put an H2 above this to say grid view. So we can see as we look at this example that here's our grid view. Let's run 
run it and see if we get any behavior by default. And we don't. It says an item template must be defined on list view. And we can't do that. We have to do that via code. So let's go in. text, eval, first name. And I am frozen. I was not even doing a database operation. Oh, no, there I am. Woo. First name. I'm going to save this. present this name like any way I want to. So I'm going to go and create my two labels for first name and last name. And I'm using the eval to say that's what field from the database I want. Let me make this bigger. So I create the item template for it, and I specify what I want in the list view. Notice there's nothing like a table or anything here, all right? Nothing like a table here. So I am, uh, I can put these and I can format these freely however I want, all right? So in this case, I simply have two labels, one with the first name and one with the last name. So let's run this. And notice what we get. We get simply name, name, name appearing that way. All right. So we can format this however we want. All right. So in other words, instead of, notice how it's a little bit goofy, how we have, by the, how the default behavior puts the first name in one column and the last name in another. We could actually go and create, sort of concatenate those things. Uh, we could make a, and we could format this however we wanted to. We could put each of these in a div if we wanted to and float them side by side. So let's do that. Let's, let's get rid of this. 
And what are our other choices here? We have office, hire date, and email. So office, hire date, and email. We can add these other things on here.
when I'm done, I can get exactly the way that I want this to look. So now I have, when I go and run this, I have my little boxes for everyone. They're in their sections. And now it's just a matter of formatting. All right? I already got rid of the bullet points because that was one of the first things I was going to do is get rid of the bullet points. Uh, but apparently I already have that in my CSS code. If we look at the CSS code, yeah, I get rid of the, the, the UL um, list style type of none. So now let's go and let's format this the way I wanted to because I kind of wanted there to be like a border or some way to break it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say every thing that has a class of professor, that's what I called it, right? Yeah, class of professor. Everything that has a class of professor, I'm going to give a background color of a light gray. So maybe something like pound sign AAA. I'll give some padding. I'll give a width. And I'll float it to the left. And I'll give a border. One PX, black. Solid and a uh, margin. I think that's all I wanted to do. Why is it griping about this? Oh, it's not. So when I go and run this, I get my little panels like that. And again, we can style however we want to. Has the advantage of floating, so if I get too small, it will drop that down. If I get too small still, it'll drop that down, which is almost exactly what Canvas does. If I get this, I lied. I swear I thought it did that. Well, we're better than Canvas, right? Well, it does drop this guy down, all right? Like these things on this margin, if I go and make it small, it drops them down below. So it, it does have some floating in it, just not of these things. So this just gives us the ability of formatting a list of items a different way than the boring old standard grid view, throw it in a table, you know, so we can format it any way that we want to. We could still make a table if we wanted to, but if we're going to go to this trouble, we probably should just as well use the grid view, all right, if we just want to use a table. So this would probably be if we wanted to format a different way than the table, all right? Now, going back to our chart, which I have to post to Canvas, because this is a really good summary of the differences between the two. I can page, I can sort, I can do inserting and grouping and all that stuff on here, as well as an edit or delete. Um, if we did that, then what would we have? We'd have an item template, uh, I'm sorry, not an item template, but an insert template if we went into insert mode. Or we would have a, uh, a, a read-only template. Is that what we called it? No, the item template is a read-only template. The edit template is to change it and so on. So we keep the same sort of template names. Let me go to Canvas and let me post this example to class.
So that is a data list. For those of you that may have came in a couple minutes late, um, what we are reviewing today are simply alternatives to the grid view and the details view. And with these, um, keep in mind that for some of them you get more flexibility, but it requires a little more effort as well. And the first one that we looked at was a list view. All right, the next one we are going to look at is a, we did, which one did we do? Data list or list view. Let's do data list. All right, so there we have a data list. And I'm going to put another H2 in here just to show you. Again, as I said before, um, you certainly would probably never create a page. <coughs> you probably would never create a page that would have all of these on the same page. I'm just putting you putting them all on the same page for sort of like compare and contrast. Alright, so let's go back to the design view. I can do the same thing with the data list. Interesting CSS question. Notice that that is alongside of that because these guys are floated. How can I make that drop down? I can put uh, in the CSS, I can say on H2s. Clear the floating. Clear both. So that will stop any floating that has occurred. So now if we look at that, data list is down below it. Okay, I can click here and I can say, choose data source. I'll pick the same data source I had before. And I can say edit templates. And here I'm back to essentially square one, like with a details view, all right, uh, or a grid view where I can go in and I can edit the different kinds of templates. If I run it without doing anything, guess what? It's not going to show me anything. So my data list shows nothing because I don't have an item template yet. So I have to go in and create an item template. So, my item template could simply be a label that says, hey, here's a professor. And guess what? We're going to get three instances of, hey, here's a professor. All right? Simply because that's the way that it does it. Now, we probably don't want that, so I can go in for my item template and I can code what I want. So I can code a label here if I want. Let me get rid of this nonsense. I could code a label here. Let's make this one a little bit different. Let's say I want to display last name, first name. And I could put another label next to it. And I could display first name. All right. There's nobody in here. Yeah, it's an empty class today. Here is your laptop. We have a visitor in class today. She's going to be doing the second half of the lecture.
we have that label and we want to, we can even hard code a little comma between it if we can slide our mouse in there or we can just put here a comma. And now when we run it, we'll get their name displayed that way. All right, let's look at the HTML that gets created. The HTML that gets created is is a TD, is a table. All right? Which I really don't like. All right? Um, I mean, I guess it serves a purpose, but I don't like the fact that it creates a table uh, by default. And we could go back and create the grid view simply by putting extra TDs in here, I think, and all that, but this creates a table. Again, not really big on that. Let me look here. The, uh, the data list. Hmm. It says no for table layout, even though it does look like it did create a table layout. Column layout, okay. I guess, strictly speaking, this doesn't look like a table. It just looks like a column. I don't know. I don't like this one, but it is available. All right. The last one I'm going to do is, if I'm not mistaken, the most flexible of all of, all of them, and that is the repeater. So I'm going to go and Add another H2 for repeater. And we'll drag that guy over here. I can choose data source. And it's much like a list view in that we have to go in to find the different templates using the source. So we could define, for example, an item template for it. Either looks the same or looks different uh, than the one that we already have. So we can accomplish pretty much the same thing with the list view or the repeater. Uh, the nice chart shows you really the difference. Uh, a list view does pretty much the same thing that a repeater does, but it allows you to be able to insert, edit, and delete where repeater view does not. Uh, I guess, looking at this, um, I sort of see the clear winner here is the list view. You get a nice combination of functionality and flexibility and relative ease. All right, so, but they're all alternatives and they all have their right place. Uh, and you can review the documentation to see when you might want to use one or, or the other. <coughs> But the nice thing is with these, and, and um, I don't have any assignments for these per se, but I do encourage you to consider these for your project. 
Uh, one of the things about the project is that we want it to look polished, professional, like a completed application. Uh, and therefore, some of the things that you can do and the flexibility that you have with the list view allows you just to do a much better sort of presentation instead of the standard run-of-the-mill, here's a table of data. All right? That gets the job done, to be sure, but um, it's something uh, that, that looks very run-of-the-mill, whereas using some of these controls can allow it to, to look just a lot better and give a lot uh, more polished, more finished looking. So I encourage you to find a place where you can, you can do this. You know, so you could use, you could do this for anything. Uh, let's go back and 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 think, for example, of uh, you know previous assignments that we've done, where you've had the ability to search for a book, and normally the results that you had were uh, expressed as a table of data. Well, you could present each of them as a panel of data, and you could do an image from there or whatever. You just have so much more flexibility and uh, so much more uh, ability to make the output be very polished than just the standard. I'm going to show the data uh, in the table. All right. Now, just as there are alternatives for <coughs> the list views, there are alternatives for other, uh, for, the, for the detail views as well. So, when we looked at when we looked at um, list of data, we see we have a, a, a data list. We have a grid view. We have a list view. We have a repeater. Uh, with the details view, an alternative we have from it is a form view. So, let's do a quick Google. Let me look first of all and see just as a data pager is. I don't remember that one. Looks like you use it in conjunction with a uh, list view to like do paging of, of data. That would be valuable if you had like tons of data and you didn't want to display all the data at once. You could cycle through uh, the data and show the first 10 rows, then the next 10 rows and so on. So, details view versus form view. That's sort of the, the standard what we've had for a details view. The forms view, again, allows uh, to display it in a, uh, renders all fields of a single record in a single table row. And we can place controls in there. The form gives more, con more uh, flexibility over the rendering of the fields. Still looks like it uses a table. And again, the summary, the details view control is easier to work with. The forms control provides more control over the layout and so on down the line. All right, so let's go to this page. And right now there's a details view on it. Um, we will go and we'll change this page to have a forms view on it down below. So that's faculty main.
and again right click or choose the edit template to choose uh, and again we're stuck back to there being one template for the entire form and you at least need the item template so I will put in here the item template uh, and again we've seen this before we can make it work the way that we want to so I can go and I'll do a couple of uh, templates here I'll do a um, label for first name a label for last name I'm thinking I forgot to tag tag oh I did but I did it like way in the wrong place And that could come from the last name. And this one comes from the first name. I'm just typing in eval, first name or last name, whatever the column name is in the data source. And now if we run this, did not associate, I did not pick a data source for this, so it doesn't know what those things are. So now it should work. wanted to create a edit item template we could do that and again the procedure would be just about the same so I can go in here and say edit templates and I can make the edit item template and I could put here a text box that is bound to last name. Now, one thing I don't see how to do here, but I'm going to have to look up, is how do I actually allow um, for going into insert mode or going into change mode? Let me look that up real quick.
this in the read-only view. And the item template. And I can put the update and cancel in the edit template. So this will act pretty much like a details view where if I'm in here I can go in edit mode. Edit mode only shows me the one thing, uh, one field, because that's all I had in the edit template. So I could change his name to Smith, update, and that didn't work. All right. Um, oh, the reason it didn't work is um, my update statement associated with this has a bunch of parameters, so I would have to allow all of them. If I change my update parameters on this to only have uh, the the last name, that would work then. All right. Remember uh, this: the update parameters and the update statement. I'm borrowing from the view that was already there. All right from the details view that was already there that had all those fields. So it didn't work because the update statement's expecting all these parameters that I only have. I only have the one parameter in there. I'm only from this grid view, I'm only including the last name as part of the update statement. All right. Um, I will actually put that in here. as a note. I believe that to be the case. Now, can we do the same thing with these? Can we say like on item deleted, on the item deleting, we absolutely can. So anything that we did as far as grid views and details views, as far as that goes, we're able to do here as well. All right, so consider these going forward in your project if you want something that doesn't look like the standard cookie cutter ASP.NET uh, application using just the default details views and grid views. For example, name, you know, using the grid view, I'm sorry, using the details view, the name is spread out on two lines. That doesn't look natural, right? It'd be much better if you used a form view to put the first name and last name next to each other, like this. All right? And there might be many cases uh, where you can do things like this. Does anyone have any questions either about this or the project that you're working on? How's your project going? I'd like maybe a, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll stop the